Hi friends, welcome back to Free Circuit Lab. Capacitors are a crucial part of our life because without them we cannot build circuits. So measuring them is also important. Most of us use this multimeter which doesn't come with this feature. So we cannot measure caps with this meter. We need an expensive meter for the job. But everybody cannot afford this. So will cap remain out of our reach forever? No. Last year I made this device which can measure a microfarad capacitor easily with a triple five timer and a stopwatch. Mounting the capacitor, if I press the button, it will start the stopwatch and will charge the capacitor with a selected register. After charging the capacitor to a certain voltage, it will stop the stopwatch and end the charging process. And we get a time equivalent to the microfarad value. For this 10 microfarad capacitor, I get 9.5 seconds. So it definitely works. Can we measure this tiny capacitor with this device? No, because these are so tiny that it charges pretty quickly and it does not let us release the button and before that the charging process ends and we get a wrong value. So I had to find another trick and obviously I found it and I made the version 2.0. The idea is pretty similar, instead of charging it once, we will charge and discharge it continuously and we will measure the time to complete a fixed number of charging cycles. So we have to use an stable or free running oscillator circuit instead of a single sort or monostable circuit. The frequency of the oscillator will be set by our test capacitor and we have a pulse counter board which counts the input pulses and outputs a pulse at every 65,000 pulses at the input. So its output will be slow enough to drive the stopwatch as 1 second for 1 nanofarad gap which can be calibrated by our frequency setting registers. To make it we need a suitable clock which features a stopwatch. Most of the digital watches also have this same circuitry and they will work too. And of course we need the main core component, a 555 timer chip. Since the caps are very tiny, they will generate high frequency which we cannot fit directly to the stopwatch. So we need to reduce the frequency with a frequency counter or divider you can say. One such circuit is found in analog clocks. This circuit has a crystal inside which generates around 33,000 pulses at every second but its motor gets triggered once every second. So there must be a counter which keeps track of the pulses at the input. At every 32,768 pulses, it triggers the motor once. And here we have two outputs which gives pulses alternatively for the motor. If we take a single pin, it will output a pulse every two seconds. So a single pin will give pulses at every 65,000 pulses at the input. So we have to tune our oscillator circuit in such a way that it outputs 65,000 pulses at every second for one nanofarad capacitor. And we will get one second at the stopwatch. So let's open the clock and take the necessary part of it. Here we find some pads next to the buttons. To trigger this switch, I have to connect the output pulse to this pad. I couldn't film the whole process of the circuit making because it, because it took a lot of time to plan position and making the connections correctly. So let us see the key points only. And we will use a switch to have multiple ranges. This switch will just change the frequency by 10x so that we can increase the time for tiny capacitors and decrease the wait time for bigger capacitors and finish the measurement under 10 seconds for every capacitor. Now we are almost ready just have to add the clock module and of course it provides a nice look with this clock. Anyway let us complete the project and now it is finished and see the analog clock board is still running on its clock and it outputs a pulse at every 2 seconds. On the scope at the left side you can see the pulses are at every 2 second apart and at the right side you can see the stopwatch starts and stops at exactly 2 seconds. So the circuit works fine, the pulse from the counter board can trigger the stopwatch correctly. Now we will take the crystal out and connect the oscillator output to this pin. The circuit is complete, let us test it. I have an 102 cap, it's 1 nanofarad, so at the lowest range it should give 10 seconds. I reset the watch, wait until it starts on its own and it should stop after 10 seconds and we get 9.5 second. So my device tells it is 0.95 nanofarad. So let us test the real capacity. And yes, it is pretty close. The next test, it's a 103 cap. That means it is 10 nanofarad. We should get 100 second, but we cannot wait so long. So we just shift the range to make it 10 second. We reset it, it starts and we get 7.25 second. The actual value is 6.9 nanofarad. This is also very close. Next test with the 473 capacitor, it is 47 nanofarad. 
we cannot wait for 47 seconds so we just shift the range to the next and now it should give 4.7 seconds we reset the watch wait until it starts itself and we get 5.6 seconds that means 56 nanofarad let us check it and it is 55 nanofarad this is also a great success and we test the legendary capacitor 104 we find it everywhere it is 100 nanofarad so it should give 10 second let us test and we get around 6.8 second so let us find where the problem is is my device faulty or the cap itself and we get 66 nanofarad value so the capacitor itself is faulty this here is our circuit diagram the table 5 ic is here this is the analog clock board this is the digital stopwatch and here 5 volt comes in from a charger or something like that and this diode is necessary for reverse polarity protection these are 5 resistors for range selection these are 2 channel switches which has 3 contacts the one channel goes to pin 7 another channel goes to pin 6 our test capacitor goes here from pin 2 to ground pin 1 is ground pin 8 is positive supply pin 4 is reset pin of the IC it should be tied to the positive rail the pin 5 is the control voltage pin I have connected a 10 nanofarad capacitor here to make the circuit stable and here the pin 3 is the output pin the output signal have a 4 volt peak to peak voltage so that is a pretty high for this board that is why I have added two 1k resistors to divide it into two that means here the signal will be 2 volt peak to peak to power this board I have used a clever trick here I have an indicator LED here 1k and red LED red LED drops around 1.6 or 1.8 volt that is why I have connected this positive and negative of the LED directly to the power pins of this analog clock board here are two output pins of this board we can take either of them i can connect it directly to this pad it will work too but then this will disable the manual function of the button that is why i have used a diode and a capacitor here for making it stable because uh, it might miss some pulses if the pulses are too narrow that is why i have added a capacitor here to make sure that it does not uh, miss any pulse okay to power this stopwatch i have added a separate battery here 1.5 volt the minus of the battery should be connected to the ground of the whole circuit otherwise this uh, triggering will not work the advantage of adding a separate battery for this is uh, when the circuit is off there is no power here the uh, display will show you time so that's it for the video i hope you liked the concept if so don't forget to like the video and share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel for regular update thank you for watching i will catch you in my next video